Okay, so let's get started. The next thing I'm going to do is create another component, and that one is going to be a custom button. I'm not going to call it button, however, because that would mean we're using button, which is going to be a native HTML element. And I don't want the native HTML elements to get mixed up with my my custom components. So what I'm going to do is create a new button, and I'm going to call this one myButton.View, just to signify that it's a custom button. Let's head into my button and start defining that new template. I'm actually going to save a little bit of time by copying over the template from app because it's going to be very similar. We're going to almost always have template, script, and style tags inside of your view components. Instead of having this div up here, however, I'm going to have a button and we're going to allow the user to heavily customize this. For now, I'm just going to hard code button, but we are going to let them customize the label as well as the styling. Uh, this is all we need to do for now. So what we're going to do is use our custom button component and make sure everything is working. So I'm going to head over to app.view and just start using the component there. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and import it. So I'm going to import my button, and that's of course going to come from the myButton.view file. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and register it in components. So view know which, knows which component we're going to use. I'm just going to put my button in here. And finally, we can go ahead and use it. And there's two ways we can do this. One would be to use my button uh, in this exact same format. An alternative would be to use lowercase and then put a hyphen in between. Both of these are valid and you can choose whichever one you want. And just to illustrate this does work, I'm going to save it off. And you can see we now have two buttons. I'm going to go with the lowercase format for now, but you can choose the one that you like best. So the next thing we're going to do is allow them to provide some customization to this component. And what I'd like to let them customize is going to be the color of the text. And I'm just going to set that to be white for now. Uh, the background, which we might set to be maybe red. And we're going to have a label as well. And we're going to do that soon. But first, I'm also going to have one more property, and that's going to be disabled. And we're going to say that one is going to be true by default. So you might notice here I'm not using the colon syntax yet. If I use the colon syntax, this is going to evaluate a JavaScript expression. However, white, red, and true, none of these are JavaScript expressions as such. They're just regular HTML. So by doing this, they're going to pass down a static string value. Let's go ahead and see how this works. I'm going to head over to my component, and we're going to add, uh, firstly, a custom style tag. And we can use a colon here, which is short for vbind, as you might remember from the previous lecture. And this is then going to evaluate the JavaScript expression if we do have that colon binding there. And what this means we can do is uh, we can remove this for the shorthand, and I'm going to be able to pass in some custom variables here. So what we can do is uh, jump inside of here. I'm going to set the background here. And for now, I'm just going to make it red just to show you how this works. And if we save this one off, it's actually going to update and we see the background is now red. What we can do instead of using the static string here is use the one that the user is going to pass. And firstly, we need to declare which props are going to be received in this component. I'm going to create the new props key and we're going to define our properties here. So the first is going to be color and the type of that one is going to be a string. And we're not going to say it's required. We're going to have some uh, nice defaults that are going to be used if the user doesn't provide a default color. The next one we're going to have is background, of course, and this is also going to be a string and we're not going to have a default, uh, a required tag or a default value here for now. The last one is going to be disabled and this is going to be a true or false value. So that's actually going to be a Boolean and that's going to work perfectly fine. Now that we have all three of these, let's go ahead and uh, improve the styling of this a little bit before we move on. So the first thing I'm going to do is use button in here. And because we have the scope tag up here, it's only going to apply the button styling to buttons inside of this template tag here. The first thing I'm going to do is make uh, some better defaults. So I'm going to say the background is just going to be none for now. We are going to override this soon. We're also going to say the color is going to be none. Uh, let's actually make it black for now. We're also going to have a border of none. And finally, we're going to have a default border radius. And this is not something I'm going to let the user customize. I'm just going to make it five pixels by default. Let's save this off and see how it looks. So still not great. Let's add some padding in here. I'm just going to have 10 pixels of padding on the Y axis and 40 pixels of padding on the X axis. Now we're looking a little bit better. I'm also going to increase the font size to let's say 16 pixels for now. And now we're starting to get something that looks a little bit more like the button that I want to design. Now that we have this, let's go ahead and pass down these custom values, uh, white and red in this case. So what I'm going to do is jump up into my style tag and instead of having background here, I'm just going to use background. And what this is going to do is refer to the background prop we've passed down. Remember, any props you pass down are going to be available in a template, either by this kind of string interpolation syntax or inside of any variables we have up here, for example, with style binding. So let's go ahead and try this one out. I'm going to delete that text and save this one off. And you can see that we're now getting red and the background is now red, which it already was anyway. Let's go ahead and update the color just to see if it's one working. So I can jump in here and say color is just going to be color, which is going to be white. And if we save this off, it is now white. There is a little trick we can do here to make this a little bit shorter. Because we have the same key and a variable name, we can actually delete this and it's going to be exactly the same thing. 
It's just going to make it a little bit more readable. Let's save that one off and it is now working great. The next thing I'm going to do is remove this one and put button back in here for now. And I'm going to choose some better colors. I don't really like the red and white. What I like to use for color is actually white, but for the background, I'm going to use dark slate blue, which I think looks pretty good. Let's save this one off and there we go, looking good again. I haven't saved off the, view, uh, the button file, but now I have and we've got button back. The next thing we're going to do is have some styling for when we hover over it. At the moment, if you hover over it, we don't even really know it's a button. So what I'm going to do is add a cursor here and that one's just going to be pointer. And this is going to indicate that it is a button. And there we go. I'd also like to add a bit of extra uh, color changing when you hover over it. So what I'm going to do is have a filter here and just use brightness of 125%. And that's going to make it a little bit more clear. I only want to hover, uh, do this filtering when we hover, however. So what I'm going to do is add a hover tag here and do it inside. It is entirely possible to use other languages in here. For example, if you're designing, you might like to use SAS. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now because it requires a little bit of configuration. So we're just going to do it uh, this very simple way. This does work though. If I now hover over it, you can see it is changing color. So this is definitely a good place to be. In the next lecture, we're going to see how we can use disabled and have some customized uh, features and customized styling depending on this disabled Boolean here.